Good day, my name is Yulit Nare, a second year nursing student from Southwestern University, Finland. Today we'll be performing CPR. So the first step, we would have to ensure scene safety. Make sure that you and your patient or ensure that your patient or the victim in question are both safe because we don't want you as well as your patient to become endangered. So first off, we should make sure that they're in a flat surface as well as no uh, objects nearby. The next step will have to position yourself by kneeling on one side of the patient or on the client and the shoulder and chest area of their client. The reason why we do this is so that proper body mechanics. Without this, we may be able to do chest compressions by the patient by moving their body. So proper body mechanics is important. The next step, we should have to tap on the client's shoulder and ask, hey, 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 are you okay? Repeat this step two to three times. And if the client is unresponsive, we should proceed to the next step. The reason why we do this is to assess if the patient is unconscious. So follow as I do. Hey, 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 are you okay? Hey, 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 are you okay? The reason why we do both ears is so that the patient may hear or they may have a possible obstruction with the ear and they cannot hear. We're also doing this is because hearing is the last sense that you will uh, miss out. After, say, after assessing that the client is unconscious, the next step would be to call out to the crowd for assistance and ask others to call an ambulance or call 911. Specifically, we'll have to call somebody out with specific markers so that they would be known that they will be needing assistance or you're going to be needing assistance. Specifically saying, you sir sitting on the bed with a white uniform, could you please dial 911 at this exact place? Remember to always state the place, location, and specifically how many patients or the clients there are. Next step. We'll have to position the client correctly his or her back being flat on a hard surface the reason being is so that when we apply chest compressions the patient is stable and we're not damaging them in any way so make sure that it's a dry and flat hard surface if we're gonna do this on a table the table might break and there are possible complications might occur Next step, you have to check for the client's breathing. We have to tilt the client's head back to open the airway to listen for the client's breathing for up to 10 seconds. And if there is no breathing, start chest compressions. The reason why we do this, so uh, before that, I'd have to start with lifting your patient's head first and with the, with the jaw. And then we lower our heads to here for breathing. If there is none, you then directly go for <coughs> chest compressions but in this case it would be better to also feel for their pulse so while we're doing this you can also use the hand closest to you to check for pulse and if there's no breathing we should start chest compressions to do chest compressions the sixth step would be to place the heel of the non-dominant hand at the center of the sternum and place the heel on the dominant of the dominant over hand and then center your weight over your hands. Regardless, you can do it with either hands as long as you're comfortable. But in my case, I'm right-handed, so I'll be doing this. Specifically, the center part of the sternum, and then you start your chest compressions. And make sure that the client's chest with the heel of your hand will be going up to a depth of two inches. Then, we ensure appropriate chest recoil of the patient by lifting your body weight of the client in between chest compressions. The next step would be to give 30 chest compressions and push hard and fast at approximately two compressions per second. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, two, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. After 30 chest compressions, we give two rescue breaths, tilt the client's head gently and lift the chin up, and pinch the client's nose and seal your mouth over the client's mouth. Blow air steadily and firmly for one second. Observe for chest rise while blowing air. So the reason why we do Head lift chin lift maneuver so that we can open their airway. But if it's a child and an infant, we shall not do that. So do as I follow. Over their nose and breathe. 
You should see proper chest expansion or rise. If not, do it again to make sure. The next one would be if we're following or you have a bag valve mask, make sure that the pointed part of the bag valve mask is uh, placed in the nose or near the nose and the wide area would be on the mouth. By doing this, we're going to be using another method called the easy clamp. Then we're going to be lifting, then blow. Make sure to not use the entire bag as giving the patient excess air will go through it there. Going back in step 10, we should be able to give uh, two rescue breaths under the 13 chest compression. And uh, by doing this, we should have to tilt the client's head gently and lift the chin up. Put the client's nose, pinch it, and seal your mouth over the client's mouth and blow air steadily for firmly one second and observe for chest rise while blowing air. So do so as follow. The next step is step 10. After 30 chest compressions, we should give two rescue beds. Before doing so, we'll have to do the proper maneuver. We should tilt the chin set up well, as well as assisting their chin and then we pinch their nose and give two rescue breaths for approximately one second. And then we'll have to look at the chest while we're giving two rescue beds for chest rise. So do so as follow. If, support, pinch, and then blow. Next, if you do have a bag valve mask, make sure that when you're placing the bag valve mask, the nose area should be on the narrow tip, while the mouth area should be on the wide tip. And for using a bag valve mask, we'll be using the AC clamp method so that it will be easier. As using this method, the three fingers on your hand should lift the patient's chin while your pointer and your thumb would be to assist the bag valve mask. So we also give two rescue breaths. Okay, after that, the next step would be to repeat the cycle of 30 chest compressions and two rescue breaths for four cycles, and then check your client's pulse for whenever the client is regaining consciousness. So after you're performing your last 30, so it's 25, 36, 27, 28, 29, 30. After those cycles, we'll have to check for their uh, uh, breathing and then for circulation. So we'll do so as follow. The next step would be, if the client remains without a pulse or still unconscious, we'll have to continue CPR until help arrives. Or if the client recovers, then we'll have to make sure that they have a pulse that is present as well as consciousness. So before doing anything or uh, anything other else for the patient, we'll have to make sure that they are conscious or they have a pulse. The next step would be to place the client who has regained consciousness into recovery position by raising the arm of the client that is nearest you to you with the elbow bent and the palm facing upward. Step is we would have to put the patient if they do regain consciousness or a pulse into the recovery position. So as follows, we'll have to use the hand closest to us, place them, place the hand with the palm facing upward, and then slightly bend it towards the patient. Afterwards, we're gonna turn our patient to a sideline position. Sir Gamayang, sir ha. The reason why we're doing this is so that we could avoid the patient potentially. Aspirating. So with this, if the patient does ever choke, they'll be able to expel out the contacts. Next would be, with their hands pulling the client and hand on the cheek and the client's neck, flex the knee, you will roll the client towards you and adjust the client's chin to make sure their airway is open. This is the full recovery position of the patient, making sure that they're on a sideline position so that if any complications do arise, to be able to see it firsthand as well as making sure that the patient is safe. That is all.